What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 2 of our Atari breakout series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched part 1 of this series, please watch it before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the video and then come right back. Now if you watched part 1 then you should have a, a program that looks something like mine. The collision works fine but then sometimes the ball actually goes through the paddle and that's pretty annoying and that's what we'll be fixing in this video along with a few other changes like actually cloning our block, changing the block's costume and also making sure that we don't have to duplicate you know 30 blocks and instead using the clones to actually make our program more efficient. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing that I'll be doing is actually changing the lag of my paddle so that you know it doesn't have that effect where the ball goes right through it. And to do that, all you have to do is to increase this time lag by a little bit. And if you didn't face the lag, it's probably because your computer is pretty fast. And in case you aren't, uh, you are facing that lag and your computer isn't as fast, you just have to increase that lag, um, you know, to some extent so that the ball actually, you know, doesn't, um, uh, actually doesn't go through when the player actually is hiding. So if this code actually executes before this um, change in direction, then the ball isn't going to even realize that it touched the player while the player is going to realize that it touched the ball. So what this code is basically uh, going to do is it's going to allow the ball to change direction first and then it's going to actually have this small little animation pop up and that's going to make sure that our program works fine and you can see that clearly after we do that the ball actually doesn't go through our player anymore and that's pretty nice. Now I'm going to actually change the background to a nice little star sky background uh, instead of this boring little you know a white background. So within choose a background you want to double click on choose a background once again and you want to click on the tab which says space and then you can click on stars. And you should have a stars pop up like this. I'm just going to convert it to a vector, although you really don't have to do that. It just makes it easier while zooming in and zooming out. Now with that out of the way, let's get right into our blocks code. I'm going to click on block one and I'm going to change the costume or rather the edge of the block to be white because I think white is going to be a little better of a contrast than red in a dark background. So click on the fill icon and then you want to change that red to be white by just changing the saturation to zero and keeping the brightness at 100 and then just drop the color onto the edge and you should have a nice little um, block and I'm also going to rename this block to be one and I'll explain why I'm doing this uh, a little bit later but uh, as of now just keep that as one. So now we'd have the block looking you know a little better with the background and now let's get into its code. So the first thing I'm going to do within its code is actually remove this if then and the forever loop. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're not going to have multiple blocks but instead multiple clones so that we don't have to duplicate our block literally 30 times. So what we're going to do first is to set the size to 80 because I tested this and I found that 80 works best on the screen. And then I'm going to have a nested loop, okay. But before that I also want to just remove this show and put in a hide there because we're showing the clones of the block and not the block itself. And you want to grab two repeat loops and uh, the first one is going to be repeat you know number of blocks you have so that's going to be four in our, our vertical axis. So we'll have you know four blocks like one, two, three, four and uh, horizontally we'd have six blocks. So I'm going to have a repeat four and then a repeat six. There we are. And uh, what I'm going to have within this is a little bit complicated, but try to bear with me. I'm going to initialize two variables. One is going to be called X and one is going to be called Y. And ironically, they're going to come, uh, they're basically going to uh, result in being opposites of each other. Like uh, the blocks X position is determined by the Y variable and the blocks uh, Y position is determined by the X variable. But don't worry too much about that. You'll understand why I'm doing that in a second. So initially what I'll do is I'll be setting X to be 1 and uh, right after the repeat 4 I'm going to be setting Y to 0 and this is pretty important okay do not mess up on this step. Uh, if you don't uh, set the Y right here and you set it outside the loop you're going to start getting some really really weird errors. Now inside this repeat 6 what I'm going to do is I'm going to change Y 
by one and then uh, outside this repeat six uh, and inside this repeat four, I'm gonna change X by one. So this is kind of like a nested loop, which uh, I believe that some of you might have been used to. And now we have to actually program the clones. Program your clones, the first thing you need to do is to go to the control section and grab this block of code which says create clone of myself. And you wanna put that right above the change Y by one. Now this itself is going to result in a bunch of bugs and um, I, I know you might not really know why at this moment but just bear with me for a second. Now I'm going to initialize a variable called cloned and I'm going to put a question mark in the variable name itself and uh, initially I'm going to be setting cloned right at the beginning to be um, no. I, you could set it to false and true, I'm just going to be setting it to yes and no. So clone to no and right after or right before you create a clone of myself I'm going to set cloned to be yes. And once I create a clone of myself, what's going to happen is that I have to um, basically go to a particular x and y position that's a function of these two x and y variables. But if we just allow the script to move on since Scratch processes scripts parallelly, this uh, line of code is just going to go on and we might actually result in changing y by one before we have even uh, you know, told our clone where to go and our clone may end up going to the wrong position. So what we're gonna do is to actually regulate that with the help of a variable which is cloned. And uh, how I'm going to do that is just gonna have a wait until and I'm gonna put that after I create a clone of myself and within the wait until I'm gonna have an equals to and I'm gonna have wait until cloned is equals to no. And what I'm gonna have when I start as a clone is just set a clone to yes. And I'm gonna do that right now so that I don't forget it later on. So when I start as a clone, um, I'm gonna go to some X and Y position, which we'll decide later. I'm just gonna say go to whatever X and Y. And then right after that, I'll be setting um, cloned to be um, no. So set cloned to no. And right here, this clone variable is going to turn into a no. And then now the script can actually execute uh, further. And then we'd have a pretty nice you know, animation with our blocks all coming up pretty neatly. So that's one thing that you um, need to have. Now what's left is to actually make sure that you know, the X and Y positions are functions of the opposite variables. And that's a little bit uh, different than what you might think. So we're not just gonna have go to X, go to Y, but something a little bit different, but still simple nonetheless. The first thing I'll do is to actually initialize two more variables and they are called start X and start y. And uh, start x is going to be basically the distance that the first block is going to be away from the x-axis and start y is going to be the distance that you know the first block is uh, basically going to be from the center. So keep in mind that start x and start y will not exactly just correspond to you know the magnitude of that distance. Rather it's going to be the distance from the center but that's basically going to enable us to control um, what distance each block is going to be from the edges. So that's the point of the variable. So initially what I want to do is I'm gonna set start x and start y to be some random values. Okay, so start x uh, to be something and start y to be something. And uh, what's that? Oh, I didn't initialize it. So set another variable called start y. There we are. So I'm gonna set start y to also be something else. So I'm gonna leave start y as it is for now, but start x, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be setting it to be about negative 200. And uh, in case you wanna have something uniform, make sure you use the same variable, uh, same uh, magnitude as I'm using. So um, what, we gonna, uh, what we're gonna do is within this um, go to x, go to y, we're gonna do some arithmetic and I'm gonna have a plus and then a multiplication, okay, within one of the pluses. And um, on the left side where, where we just have a plus, I'm gonna leave start x and uh, on the other side, we're gonna do 75, okay, I believe that's what it is, times y, not x, but y. This is very important, okay, don't interchange this. Now we're gonna duplicate this for the y as well, but here we're gonna change this to start y and we're gonna change y to be x. And this is how, you know, we basically have the blocks going up in a nice order. I'm also going to change the 75 to be 50 because as you can see in the costumes of the block, the, um, uh, the, um, the length of this block is clearly a lot more than its uh, width. And uh, that's why we have you know, different values for these two. So that's the point of that. Now when we actually hit the green flag, nothing shows up because we actually have said um, hide right here and we haven't really told any of the clones to show themselves. 
So what I'm going to do is to just add in a show and now I'm going to hit the green flag and now you can see all the you know blocks pop up in a pretty nice animation and that's pretty cool but it isn't really you know great because as you saw many of the blocks actually got cut off and to change that what you have to do is to change your start Y. I'm going to be changing that to about 60 and uh, now when I hit the green flag uh, oopsie uh, negative 60 not 60 and uh, now when we hit the green flag everything pops up pretty neatly and uh, you can see that the blocks popped up but the thing is we had some gap on the top so I'm going to change this to negative 50 so that you know everything is pretty perfect and I think this is a pretty nice scene for the breakout. Uh, I don't think we oh yeah we did program the collision so I'm going to remove the collision uh, for the block so that we can just observe the blocks without this without the ball constantly bouncing. There we are. So the things that we actually still have to do is making sure that the block actually uh, blocks have different costumes based on the rows they are in and uh, also I'm going to move the blocks a little bit to the right because as you can see the gap here and the gap here is clearly very different. So to do that um, just uh, hit the you know stop sign and uh, change start x to be something a little bit more. So I'm going to change that to about 190 and uh, now when we hit the green flag I think this is clearly a lot better than what it was and I'm going to leave it at this for now and get into changing the blocks costumes based on the row number. So let's do that. I'm going to head over to the blocks costumes and then what I'm going to do is to duplicate this three more times and uh, the number of times is basically going to correspond to the number of rows and uh, if I have four costumes I have to duplicate it three times so perfect. Now within each of the costumes I'm going to grab the fill tool and uh, change the fill inside of the block to be uh, uh, four colors. The first one is going to be blue, the second one red, the third one yellow and the fourth one is going to be green. And uh, you could change the colors to be whatever you want. Um, you don't really have to copy me right here. But I think these are the colors that look the best on this particular game. So once you have that set up, I'm also going to do one thing within our ball. And that's to ensure that the ball doesn't collide with the blocks right at the beginning itself. So I'm going to be setting the Y value of the ball to be about 15 for now. But we can change that later on depending on how our game looks and uh, a little bit of some external factors which I'll get into later. But for now just keep it as 15. Now when we actually uh, hit the green flag you'll notice that nothing happens and that's because we haven't told our clones basically what to do when um, you know uh, when the uh, x value or the y value is uh, basically supposed to change our costumes. So to do that what we need to do is to have a switch costume to enabled right here and uh, instead of this 4 I'm going to head over to the variables tab and put in the um, x value right here and uh, now this is going to ensure that our clones have the same costume on each row but on each column they actually change and uh, you can see that clearly like this and uh, uh, you can see right now we have everything set up except for the collisions and I think this is a pretty good looking game already uh, if the collisions just work out then it's going to be pretty neat so I'm going to do that right away. So I'm going to hit the red flag and uh, get into our collisions. So to have in our collisions what I'm going to do first is to set a game over variable to be true. Uh, I'm sorry set a game over variable to be false and I'm doing this just to regulate it and uh, instead of a forever loop uh, I'm just going to have repeat until game over just a little more convenient if we want to end the loop at some time. So um, I'm going to head over to the control section grab a repeat until and I'm going to say repeat until game over equals uh, true. So I'm going to change that 50 to true and uh, put in a game over right there. There we are. And what I'm going to have inside this repeat until is just a collision checker. So if um, you could also add in something like a wait until um, touching ball and um, uh, you, could, you would have pretty much the same result and that code match uh, might actually work out more efficiently. But I think this is just simpler so this is what I'm going to have. So I'm going to uh, have an if then and if we're touching not the mouse pointer but the ball then what we'll broadcast is a change direction message. So to do that head over to events and grab a broadcast message and I'm going to change that message to be change direction. So change direction there we are I'm going to hit enter and um, all right after that I'm going to delete this clone which is going to ensure that the clone hides and uh, basically deletes itself. I'm also going to make sure that the clone deletes itself if the game is actually over and the ball is actually you know 
evaded the paddle and touched the bottom of the screen. So right after that, I'm gonna have a you lose end screen. So um, you could have a delete uh, this clone right after this as well. And this is going to ensure that the clones actually hide, but this is not going to ensure that the ball bounces off. So to ensure that the ball bounces off, what you need to do is to head over to the ball sprite and within events, you wanna grab this block of code which says when I receive change direction. So when I receive change direction, what I want to do is the same thing as I did when I was touching the paddle. I just want to point in direction, 180 minus direction. And this is going to ensure that, you know, the ball actually changes its direction properly and the collision is pretty fine. So I'm going to hit the green flag and oopsie, the ball or blocks didn't pop up. And I think that's because we didn't have, wait, what was the reason here? Yeah, we set the game overall variable to be true instead of false. So you want to set that to false at the beginning. I'm not sure what I did initially. So now when we test this out, uh, you can see that the ball actually starts doing stuff before all the blocks are initialized and that can be a bit of a problem, but that's actually a pretty easy fix and we'll do that in the next video. And that's it we'll be coding for this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.